Is widespread carbon taxation possible? With global temperatures rising and an increased frequency of extreme weather events and air pollution in our cities worsening, taxing carbon is an essential tool to wean humanity off dirty fossil fuels. The problem with taxes, though, is that while left-of-centre Europeans like me favour public spending increases, history shows that more taxes is not exactly a vote-winning message, even when people say they want better schools or hospitals or public transport. And as more of us are struggling to pay for the basics, carbon taxes are going to be a very hard sell. A possible answer is to pay the carbon tax revenue back to citizens as a regular dividend. A carbon dividend scheme is in the UK Green Party policy statement, and a more free market approach comes from right-leaning groups, Climate Leadership Council in the US and Policy Exchange in the UK, and these two proposals are the main focus of this video. Because carbon dividends appeal to both the left and right, they may be the only chance to get meaningful carbon taxation started, and perhaps more importantly, to retain public support for carbon taxes through successive changes of government. So what exactly is the point of a carbon dividend? Well, basically, governments would set up carbon taxes starting at around $40 a tonne. The prices of goods would then increase because the world economy is still heavily dependent on fossil fuel. But all this revenue is then returned to the citizens as a regular dividend, with everybody getting an equal payment. The carbon tax, or fee, is ring-fenced to the dividend, so governments cannot use the revenue for general expenditure or even for programmes to fight climate change, which makes this tax revenue neutral as far as the government is concerned. And it's important that governments understand the money is for the citizens and not for them. Otherwise, people will see it as yet another tax disappearing into government budgets, and that would give the fossil fuel lobby a very easy target. Now, all taxes create winners and losers, so who would lose out with a carbon dividend? Well, it should be the wealthiest. A 2013 study by the Roundtree Foundation found that those with the top 10% incomes produce three times as much carbon as those with the lowest 10% incomes. The simple principle is that the more you spend, the more you consume, and the more you consume, the more carbon you're generating. So the rich will pay more in tax, but receive the same dividend as everyone else. Now, of course, there could be cases where the poorest would lose out. For example, someone living alone in a poorly insulated house with an oil-fired heating system. And such cases will need to be identified and extra support given to prevent an increase in poverty. One solution there is to permit borrowing against future dividends to improve insulation and get a more efficient heating system installed, for example. Now, providing these edge cases can be identified and dealt with, the carbon dividend would actually be acting as a very mild form of income redistribution. It could even be considered a very small step towards a universal basic income. Now, a major potential problem with carbon taxes is carbon bordering. Here in the UK, we've actually done pretty well decarbonising our energy grid. 50% renewables with nuclear last year and rising. But because we import so many products made in countries like China with lots of coal generation, Per person, our carbon emissions are actually increasing. So to stop this offshoring of carbon emissions, goods coming from countries that lack similar carbon tax schemes would have tax added to them, based, for example, on the average level of carbon on the country's energy grid. And then any goods that are produced within a carbon tax region have that tax removed when they're exported, so the exports stay competitive on price. Now, issues like carbon bordering and borrowing against the dividend are addressed by the free market groups I mentioned in the introduction. But there are some possible downsides to the dividend which I haven't seen addressed. So firstly, both proposals recommend slashing existing carbon, carbon regulations because it is assumed that the carbon tax will be more effective than regulation at reducing emissions. So a carbon dividend with a tax system is still, a, is still gambling that a free market tool will deal with a basic failure in our species to take responsibility for the long term. But free market economics can have unintended consequences, and the pursuit of profit is the main reason that we're currently exhausting our planet's finite resources. Now secondly, what happens if the oil producers don't want to play ball? 
Oil is a unique product because oil producers can affect the price by simply varying their output. So what if oil producers pump out more of the stuff to artificially force down the oil price and negate the carbon taxes? Well, what if they took the opposite tack and restricted production in order to drive the oil price up, causing damage to the world economy which might then pressure politicians into abandoning the carbon taxes? Thirdly, and I think most importantly, politicians and the public must resist industries which push for carve-outs and exemptions. So let's take aviation for example. Unlike electric cars, electric aircraft are technically a very long way off. So even though air fuel is actually only around 5% of the ticket price that you will pay, the air industry is bound to lobby to heavily to be made exempt. But an exemption would hamper development of potential long-term solutions like synthetic fuels. Now it is possible to make carbon neutral fuels by literally sucking the carbons out of thin air. Carbon engineering in Canada reckon they can produce other synthetic fuels for 25% more than standard fuel, which is carbon neutral and burns more cleanly than standard mineral fuels. Even if synthetic air fuel was double the price, 100% more not 25% more, that still only adds 5% to your ticket price. A $200 airfare becomes $210. And with each person getting hundreds of dollars annually from the dividend, you'd have to make a lot of flights to be any worse off. As carbon taxes rise, the standard fuel will match the untaxed synthetic fuel on price, but the synthetic fuel would then only get cheaper with increased volumes of production, which then brings the airfares back down again. So potentially, aviation could become carbon neutral in the space of a decade or so, but that would only happen if the true cost of carbon is paid across all sectors. So there are other issues I've covered in my blog post linked down below, but overall I think that turning a carbon tax into a dividend is a good idea, and if the case is made in the right way it should find support even among climate sceptics because there are other reasons for humanity to ditch fossil fuels. The world economy depends heavily on finite fossil fuels, but the easily accessible fuels have been mostly dug up and burned. Fracking and deep water drilling and tar pit oil are signs that humanity is literally beginning to scrape the barrel. Fossil fuels are becoming increasingly expensive to extract, and the extraction is endangering precious clean land and water that remains on this planet. So the world needs an infrastructure update to infinite renewables, regardless of climate change. The fossil fuel companies have spent millions convincing us that replacing fossil fuels means an expensive, energy-poor future. But renewables are already more efficient than fossil fuels, and as they develop that level of efficiency will only increase, making energy cheaper and improving our quality of life. It would also move us away from a political world order which has been built up around oil. It would give more nations the potential to become energy independent. And it's important to remember we will not simply replace oil with one low carbon alternative. The answer is not geothermal or solar or hydrogen or wind power alone. A renewable energy economy involves many, many different ways to generate, store and consume energy. For example, cars sit unused 90% of the time. With bidirectional charges, electric cars become mobile battery packs, which can help stabilise the energy grid. Many new electric cars have this capability built in. There is a revolution possible in energy drawing on materials science, innovative engineering and even social change. And I believe that tilting the field towards renewables with a carbon tax and dividend system could unleash a worldwide technological revolution. Recycling carbon taxes into a payment that every citizen can see going directly into their bank account is surely the best strategy for carbon taxes that politicians of all sides know are necessary, but currently few have the political will to introduce.